Welcome back to Daily Bedtime Story. Tonight's story is Grandma Chicken Legs by Geraldine McGowan, illustrated by Moria Kemp. Published by Picture Corgi Books. One day, when a sudden fall of snow rubbed out the flowers, Tatia's mother died. And saying goodbye, she gave Tatia's only a kiss, a rag doll, and a word of warning. Be forgiving and be giving, dearest dear. And beware of Grandma Chicken Legs. Tatia's father loved his little daughter better than milk or meat or money. But he was a merchant and had to travel abroad for months at a time. So thinking Tatia needed a mother, he married again. A woman with eyes as sharp as needles and a soul as thin as a thread. For the woman already had two daughters of her own and had no mind to mind a third. But she pretended to love Tatia for the sake of her father's fortune. Besides, little girls can easily be got rid of when no one is looking. No sooner did Tatia's father leave on business when her life changed to winter. Stepmother told her, You must clean the house, cook the supper, and milk the cows, mend the roof, wash the clothes, feed the pigs, and set the fire. Sweet-natured as she was, Tatia did not complain. Well, only a little, perhaps, to her dear doll, Druga. Ah, oh, well, she sighed. Soon Daddy will be home again. Stepmother gave her very little food. But, of course, Tatia had the scrapings from the pots to eat. Anyway, young girls cannot help growing. One day, her smock was just too small to wear any more. Tatia, my dear child, cried Stepmother. Your smock is too small. I must sew you a new one. Fetch me my sewing box. Tatia was astonished. So were her stepsisters. Make our smocks first, Mama. They whined. Stepmother ignored them and opened her sewing box. Well, well, look at that. Oh, dear. Such a shame. No needle. Hmm. Now... Tatia will have to go to Grandma Chicken Legs and borrow one. Tatia gasped and ran to her room, pulling her rag off my pocket. She hugged her close and said, Oh, what will I do, Druga dear? I'm sure Grandma Chicken Legs will be the death of me. The dolly blinked its silk-sewn eyes and opened its wool-sewn lips. Tie your hair with a ribbon. Take a clean handkerchief. And remember what your mother said. Then all will be well. So Tatia did as Druga said. And she set off through the forest. As stepmother watched her go, she spat on the step and said to the daughters, That's the last that we see of her. On and on, Tatia walked through the woods and fields until she came to a dark forest. And there, in the shadow of a gnarled elm tree, stood a crooked house. At last, Tatia understood how their neighbour had got her strange name. It was not the old lady who had chicken legs. It was her house. Around the garden, on four scratching poultry poultry legs, ran the bleak shack. Its fence was made from whitening bones. 
the gate gate posts topped with skulls. The front door swung open on its hinges, squealing like a thing in pain. Its tea hole gnashed tiny, tiny teeth. Beside the house stood a giant grinding bowl, and in it a huge stone pestle. Before Tatia could even knock, the door flew open, and there stood Grandma Chicken Legs, looking so fierce that her own house trembled and knocked at its chicken knees. What do you want with the Baba Yaga? She screamed. What do you want with Grandma Chicken Legs? Please, Grandma whispered Tatia courteously, a needle to sew myself a smock. You shall have it if you earn it, grinned the witch, bearing iron teeth as sharp and as snappy as a mouse trap. But first come in and eat. Indoors, the shark looked more comfortable there was a polished table and a four-poster feather bed, a weaver's loom and a big open fire. The witch brought Tatia white bread rolls and golden butter, sizzling bacon in rich red wine. She showed her a silver needle too. Leave my loom for one night, and this is yours, said the witch. Thank you, Grandma. In the flickering light of a hundred candles, other eyes were watching. A small black cat and a snarling dog. Hello, said Tatia and smiled. But the cat only spat. The front door went on squealing. Tatia began to eat. But the animals both looked so famished that when Grandma Chicken Legs went out of the room... Tatia gave the bacon to the cat and the rolls to the dog. She smeared the butter on the door hinges too, to stop them squeaking. From the kitchen, Baba Yaga called her animals and whispered to them. I wonder what she's saying, Druga, said Tatia to her dolly. The dolly blinked her silk-sewn eyes and opened her wool-sewn lips. She says... Heat the water and fill the bath. You know I like my food washed before I eat it. Back in came Grandma Chicken Legs and sat Tatia down in front of the loom. Weave now while I sleep and in the morning you will have your needle. And climbing into the big four-poster bed, the witch drew the curtains closed around her. From inside, her shrill voice called, Please, don't think of leaving, will you, my dear? My cat would tear you, and my dog would chew on your bones. And the magic elm tree outside would slash you in pieces. Soon, the only noise in the room was the click worth of Tatia's shuttle shooting the loom. In came the dog and the cat, the big tin bath. To and fro they went, fetching pans of water, heating them over the fire. But as they worked, they no longer snarled or hissed. They wept, knowing the fate in store for Tatia. At last Tatia said, There, there, don't upset yourselves. I know you have to do as she tells you, though I, I wish your pans were all sieves, so the bath could take a year to thaw. She wiped her eyes with her own clean handkerchief. Grandma Chicken stirred in the big feather bed, but heard the click whirr thud of the shuttle and went back to sleep. All of a sudden, Dog trotted over, a red towel in its mouth. Take this towel and run. If Baba Yaga comes after you, throw it down on the ground. Then Cat was there too, 
a comb embedded in its black fur. Take this comb and run. If the Baba Yaga is still after you, throw it down on the ground. Druga whispered in Tati's ear, They're right. Go, run, and keep weaving until you are safely away. But Tatia shook her head. Oh, I couldn't go anywhere without you, Druga. I'd be too afraid. If I go, you must come with me. In that case, said Cat, I shall do the weaving. So out of the door went Tati, her dolly in her pocket. The hinges would have creaked and woken the witch. But Tati had smeared the butter, hadn't she? And though Baba Yaga stirred in her sleep, she heard the click, whir, thud of the shuttle and dozed off again. Outside, Tati almost screamed out loud. There against the moon, like the skeleton of a dragon, loomed the magic elm tree, its twiggy talons spread to snatch and catch. Tatia pushed her hand into her pocket, pulled out a ragdoll and held the wooden lips to her ear, woolen lips. Then she knew what to do. She untied her hair and shook it loose. Standing on tiptoe, she tied the ribbon to a twig of the magic elm. Away went her ribbon, away went the branch, as the elm stood aside and let them pass. But its twigs accidentally scratched against the cottage wall, and the Baba Yaga stirred in her sleep. <laughs> Click were thud when the cat's shuttle, though it never tried its poor at weaving before, and the Baba Yaga went back to sleep. Not for long. Suddenly the loom fell with a clatter. Grandma Chicken Legs woke, hungry. She dragged over the bed curtains and saw. Cat, cradled in hopeless tangle of broken threads, and dog hiding in the tin bath. Of little Tatia there was no trace. Villains, traitors, fools, shrieked the witch. Grandma Chicken Legs danced with rage. Why did you not tear her and chew her and slash her and stop her? In all the years I've served you, said the cat, you've never given me so much as a rind. She gave me bacon. In all the years I've served you, said the dog, you've never given me so much as a crust. She gave me white rolls. In all the years I've served you, said the door. You've never given me so much as a drop of oil. She smeared me with the best butter. In all the years I've served you, said the elm tree, you've never so much as hung your washing on me to dry. She tied a ribbon in my hair. See? Pretty, isn't it? She leapt into the giant grinding bowl and grabbing the huge pestle began to punt her magic vessel through the air faster than a ch chariot she flew while the chicken legged house ran after her you won't get away from me she screamed as in the distance tatia came into sight however for us tatia and druga ran they could not outrun the baba yaga then take wing when Tatia looked around, she saw the iron teeth gaping, the eyes ablaze. Throw down the towel the dog gave you, cried Druga. At once the towel stretched itself along the ground, a wild rushing river full of sharp rocks with steep banks and white water rapids. Its magic was too strong for birds or witches to fly over it. And Baba Yaga had to land her grinding ball and climb out. Down on her knees she got and began to drink. Slurp went the water through the, those iron teeth. Gurgle went the river down the Baba Yaga's throat. Rivers won't save you, she screamed. She leapt back a ball into her magic ball. Soon she had Tati again in sight and almost within her grasp. Throw down the comb that Cat gave you, cried Druga. 
and up sprung pine trees, hundreds and thousands of dense, dark pine trees, their trunks so close together that not a stoat nor a weasel could squeeze between them. Flying too fast to stop, the magic grinding ball crashed into the trees, and the Baba Yaga fell out on her head. Like a headless chicken, she danced with uncontrollable temper. Her voice screeched over the treetops. Forests won't save you! And barring her iron teeth, she began to chomp and chew on the tree trunks, spitting out the twigs and splinters. But her teeth were wet from drinking the water. Long before the forest was eaten, the iron between her jaws began to rust. And Grandma Chicken Legs had to give up her chase. And her cottage came trotting along. She went inside and slammed the door. The bleak shack ran off on its four chicken legs to another country, another story, another secret corner of the telltale world. Tatia was still running, though, running without looking back, or even where she was going. She ran off right into a merchant leading his horse along the road. Tatia? Daddy! cried Tatia and hugged her father and told him everything, just as it had happened. When they got home, Tatia's father called his new wife and her two daughters and took out a pair of scissors. He cut their fine silk dresses from neck to hem and their six cotton petticoats too. Then he turned them out of the house in nothing but their drawers and told them never to come back. But we must have our clothes, they wailed. Then you had best go and borrow a needle from Grandma Chicken Legs, said Tatia and firmly shut the door. Fortunately, her father had brought home plenty of Cloth for smocks, enough for new ones in red and yellow and blue. Not just for clothes either, but for a cushion and a rug, which is just as well, because the next day, dog and cat arrived. Druga had told them the way. All five of them lived together in perfect happiness after that, without a care in the world. Also, Druga told me yesterday. The end. Sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite.